From the morning reading, the Q's set a new all-time high. Spider grinds sideways as energy stocks sell off. Five of nine sectors moved higher on Monday, XLV, XLK, and XLY were the strongest sectors, while XLE was the weakest sector. All futures fell $1.30 to close at $41.38. Breath weakened compared to the prior session as decliners led $17.61 to $12.09 on the New York Stock Exchange and advancers led $13.13 to $12.83 on the NASDAQ. The spider continued its 13-day sideways trend while the Qs closed at a new high. The Qs made a new all-time closing high in the strength of healthcare and leading stocks. Energy stocks led the SPX with 25 of the weakest 30 SPX stocks were energy-related stocks. Also in the morning reading, the S&P 500 snapshot a fractional loss to start the month. For global equity markets, August began with a whimper, not a bang. Asian indices were mixed. The major European indices finished in the red with the Euro stocks 50 down 0.78%. The benchmark S&P 500 uh, vacillated at the open, hit its 0.22% intraday high at, in the morning, its 0.34% negative low during the lunch hour and then chug sideways to its negative 0.13 percent close apparently oil was a drag on today's action with end of day west texas crude plunging 3.7 percent to its lowest close since april the 8th the yield on the 10-year rose five basis points to close at 1.51 percent Hello, this is Stephen Harris, the head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I'll provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and hedge risk levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.14 a.m. Mountain Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of August the 2nd, 2016. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. Okay, let's go ahead and dive into the morning report. And uh, a bit negative across all four of the U.S. broad-based indices, but nothing um, terribly significant. The S&P futures are down a little over five points or about a quarter of a percent. Russell futures are down a little less than a quarter, as are the NASDAQ, down a little less than a quarter of a percent. Dow futures are down just below scratch. Crude oil is up about 1%. Euro is up about 0.2%. Bonds are down about 1%. And gold is up a little over half a percent. In overseas action, looks like Hong Kong might be closed for the day. So um, this number is not reflective of live action. China, though, is uh, apparently open and looks to be uh, up about two-thirds of a percent. Japan down about one and a half percent. Germany down about one and a half percent. United Kingdom down a half a percent. In terms of macroeconomic reports for today in the United States, we have core price index, personal spending, the related uh, inflation related data um, also and looking forward to tomorrow we have the ADP non-farm employment change we have um, ISM non manufacturing PMI and crude oil inventories on a regular weekly report remember our monthly employment report will be coming out on Friday so this ADP report will be a preview of that big report on Friday morning in terms of current volatility conditions, uh, short-term VIX still in the 11 handle. SKU still just above the warning threshold of 125. IV percentiles um, still all exceptionally low. Six on the S&P, one on the Russell, two on the NASDAQ, one on the Dow. No standard deviation moves were put in once again yesterday. So we continue to see, you know, over two weeks now without a standard deviation size move in either the S&P or the Dow. So very, very quiet action. In terms of the charts, and 
There we go. Got him set up the way people like to see him. Um, so on the S&P futures, you can see we tickled a all-time high with Globex activity yesterday. That was not reinforced during the day by the cash participants, and we ended up being a bit weak. Um, then today so far, we're solidly back into the, uh, the range. So this sideways action that I think one of the morning authors mentioned had gone something like 13 days. You know, we're solidly in that range. So uh, not really accomplishing anything to the up or downside and not really signaling one way or the other. Um, let's see here. We'll take a look at the Dow. And Dow um, went up yesterday also and kind of tapped that upper resistance area. In this case, a um, falling diagonal resistance and um, backed off from there. The Russell also had in its overnight activity yesterday tapped, you know, um, uh, toyed with a breakout, but then backed off and was not supported by the cash participants. And that seems to be um, back into its prior range at this point. Nothing really leading us to think that anything's about to happen one way or another. NASDAQ did um, set a new closing high yesterday and um, right now has um, a bit of a bearish engulfing candle working on that action. So um, nothing that gives us a thought that we're likely to set um, some strong highs today, anything more than just incremental. In terms of um, bonds, bonds are selling off. And um, their movement in bonds would seem to be larger than the movement in equities that might give us an indication that equities could move up. Let's take a look at gold. Gold's also, in this case, moving up. So you've got bonds down, gold up, equities doing nothing. So I think we probably don't make too much of any of this and say that the market is indecisive at this point and... Um, and don't get too excited about any one market until they start to follow each other in their normal patterns of a real move. Um, the volatility still humming along down here at very low levels. And let's take a look at um, crude oil. Crude oil just um, continues to get hammered. Uh, West Texas had a bad day yesterday. Um, but you see the regular crude oil futures here dropped significantly yesterday. Has bounced a little bit off of that action today. But so far looks to be nothing more than a retracement of yesterday's move. And um, probably setting up for more down action. Don't see anything that tells us that we've got a bottom in in crude oil yet. Nor, you know, is this coming at a place yet where we would expect support to come in. Uh, first primary level of support would be in this 39 handle. So crude oil is probably going to drop about another one and a half dollars before we see any significant support. Now there may be some hidden support levels with FIB extensions and so forth coming into play here, but um, don't see anything obvious there. Okay, let's see. I think that's probably enough on the charts today. Let's go to the daily report. So on the daily report, um, we're still market phase three. That's bullish. That's ex expected that we'll have flags, bull flags, and um, certainly nothing terribly worrisome there. In terms of the three market timing signals, no changes. We've been kind of in a rinse and repeat kind of mode here of late. Um, but our first market timing signal from IBD confirmed uptrend. The second one, GMI index is six out of six. That buy signal has now been in place for over a month. And the stock charts decision point scoreboard still has uh, solidly in the green for the short to intermediate term, but with mixed signals in the long term, that continues to be our only kind of um, holdout signal. 
In the uh, position sizing opinions, they're both at 100%. Intermediate term market postures are all four very, very strong and also are supported by bullish sentiment lines. So nothing worrisome there. Strength of trend is strong. Hedge warning status, zero plus normal with some cautionary aspects. So nothing fearful there at this point. Strategy opinions, nothing fearful here at this point. We're relatively bullish using a 1 to 2 ratio of in the money, out of the money strikes on the covered calls and a 1 to 2 ratio of low beta and high beta positions. Uh, but everything, uh, all three of these are given permission to even novice traders to initiate new positions. I would just suggest given that um, we seem to be in this sideways pattern, uh, waiting to see... Uh, if you're going to commit new capital in a big way, wait to see that we have a breakout to the long side. Um, perhaps on individual charts, um, take advantage of some individual setups that are, are coming into play and are breaking out on their own. You know, so um, add incremental new delta position, new bullish deltas, but don't get too aggressive in case this thing does pull back if it does pull back it's likely to pull back to that old resistance area and give you even better entries in terms of specific warnings still the same two low grade warnings um, neither one of these um, doing anything significant at this time in terms of trend base um, nothing really of concern here i think i missed a number here i think this was 330 so still very strong for the bulls, up over 300. In terms of intermarket risk aversion indicators, this one has been deteriorating. And um, this is one of the things that makes us think that there is an increasing probability that we're going to see a retracement. Hence, um, good reason to hold off on initiating a lot of new positions at this point, but to wait for a better opportunity. Uh, we now have three of these signaling as risk off and a fourth one that is clearly rolling over. So um, hard to believe that the market's not going to follow through with something of a retracement, at least a small pullback, um, with this signal starting to deteriorate the way it has been deteriorating. In terms of sentiment ind indicators, it's been scrubbing off a little bit slowly, but surely it wasn't too long ago. This was up in the, you know, 90, 91 handle. A week ago, it was 85. Yesterday was 79 and now is 77. So the sideways um, pattern has been kind of scrubbing off this um, excess. And one of the things about that is that it always makes us wonder if we might have consolidation by time and then just lead to another higher breakout. So there's no guarantee that we're going to have that pullback um, so there's a couple different ways to look at these charts and consider what the next move would be um, and neither one of them is a high probability opportunity at this point so you just kind of have to be patient to see the situation unfold now what could try to push this out of this pattern things like the employment report that's coming on friday morning could be a large enough stimulus to give us that kind of activity. So we need some energy and momentum to come back into the market, some real volume to make the, um, the institutions make a play. Right now, mostly the institutions are just sitting on hands and um, just you know basically investing what they have to invest and not making a lot of changes, it would seem. In terms of market postures, you see transportation, consumer staples, financials, industrials, uh, and in particular energy are all showing some signs of weakness. Um, and indeed, about half the sectors now are not in a bullish posture in the short to intermediate term. So we continue to see some deterioration there as well. In terms of yesterday's performance, you see healthcare, mostly biotech. Uh, information technology, consumer discretionary, and consumer staples were positive yesterday. With the exception of telecom and energy, most of the others were just mildly negative. Energy, of course, getting really hit with the drop of West Texas crude. And then also telecom was giving back some yesterday as well. So that should be enough for today. Let's go ahead and do a wrap-up sequence. And um, 
One thing to kind of keep in mind is if you're not a subscriber to the YouTube channel, you really should. It's free. It doesn't cost a thing, but it does give you an alert when content has been posted, and I post content at various times. Um, so it um, kind of gives you a head start on the morning to be able to jump on this and then listen to it as early as is possible. Um, so you just go to this hyperlink here, hit the subscribe button, that'll take care of it. Also, while you're in your YouTube channel and playing back, a couple things to kind of keep in mind. Once you get notice that, that content has been posted, uh, give it about a minute or two to kind of finish. It will play. You can listen for sure. But um, one of the things to keep in mind is that it will play back in high def if you give it a couple minutes just to um, be fully processed. Um, make sure you see that little HD on the gear selector. And then also on that same selector, you can um, choose to play the playback speed of your video. Generally, most people I would suggest listen at 1.5x. You can understand what's being said. Frankly, you can listen faster than I can talk. And um, you can cut about you know our typical 20 minute morning video down to about 13 minutes if you do that so if you need to slow something down because you want to listen more carefully or even hit pause all those buttons are available as well and of course we'll also um, touch on the disclaimers we're not your financial advisor hit the pause button if you need more time to review the disclaimers also note the hyperlink down here at the bottom where you can find the full set of disclosures We'll see you um, back here tomorrow for the next market preview from Falcon Global. In the meantime, manage that risk, and you'll find that everything else falls into place very nicely. Go learn something, and good trading.